Executions across England were common during the medieval period, and also as the centuries rolled on throughout the Tudor era and later. We know most famously of kings such as Henry VIII, ordering the execution of dozens of thousands within his realm, including two of his wives. We also know much about queens such as Bloody Mary, who burned heretics and Protestants at the stake in brutal manner and fashion. In fact, England would even turn against their own king, Charles I, who then himself was executed at the behest of Oliver Cromwell and Parliament. But little is known about the men and people who carried out these historic acts of barbarism, savagery and allegedly justice. One of history's most famous though is known for his blunders and behaviours. Join us today as we look at Jack Ketch, history's worst executioner. Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. He's a man whose name is still used today as a term for Satan and death. Jack Ketch was often mentioned across England for the bloody duties he performed during the latter stages of the 17th century. Not much is known about his early life. Most executioners at the time in England would start off actually working on the wrong side of the law and would actually be functioning as offenders. Through their release from prison, some would become executioners for the state carrying out the bloody task of executing the condemned. It is said that Ketch spent some time in Marshalsea Prison. Marshalsea was an institution that dates back to 1373 and it has a rich history of incarceration and was noted during the Peasants' Revolt that it was set on fire. It later became a debtor's prison in London and by the 18th century prisoners were separated based on class. There was a side for commoners or the poorer people and a side for the richer. Inside the richer area, even wives were allowed to live and there was even a bar inside the prison and a coffee shop. The conditions on the common side were horrific and it was said in 1639 that in one room 23 women were held without space to lie down and from this a rebellion and riot occurred. It would have been at this time in which Jack Ketch would have been incarcerated in the prison. He took the office and job of an executioner in 1663, succeeding Edward Dunn who had died. Ketch had been in service as Dunn's apprentice and assistant. It was Dunn who was believed to have taken the office of executioner from Richard Brandon, the man who cut off the head of King Charles I. There was no notice of a new hangman being required until the 2nd of December 1678. Ketch is first mentioned in the history books in January 1676 in the proceedings in the Old Bailey. It mentions a case who was to be executed for a murder which took place in Whitechapel in London and also that the bailiff who was arresting the man was also killed. The small mention also added that the jury brought him in guilty and Jack Ketch will make him free as in Ketch would be the one who was the executioner. Another reference to Ketch was made in the receipts for the cure of traitorous recusants or wholesome physique of popish contagion and in this he was shown in a woodcut depicting the execution of a man called Edward Coleman. Coleman had been implicated in the plot and was sentenced to be hanged, drawn and quartered after being found guilty of treason. Today he is known as a Catholic martyr but it would be Ketch who would perform this execution. In this woodcut Coleman says, I am sick of this traitorous disease and Ketch is shown holding a rope and an axe replying with, here is your cure sir. It's reported that Ketch also wrote a pamphlet himself titled The Man of Destiny's Hard Fortune and here he confessed about his time spent in prison where he said his hopeful harvest was like to have been blasted. For his services as an executioner he was paid to complete the rather bloody job but he did go on strike in the early 1680s in order to get a pay rise and he did win his pay dispute. Executioners at the time would also receive a substantial amount of money in terms of taking bribes from people related to the execution and the condemned and they would also make money by selling pieces of the condemned. For example clothing and jewellery given to the execution before the act was carried out would have been a way in which Ketch would make money. There was a market at the time for execution relics and it was believed that the relics of the condemned could have magic qualities and also carry luck. A strand of a hangman's noose for example was worn by some gamblers to improve their chances of winning. On the 31st of August 1681, Jack Ketch presided over the execution of Stephen College 
who was hanged, drawn and quartered in the castle yard of Oxford. It was said that after he hanged about half an hour, he was cut down by Ketch and quartered under the gallows, with his entrails being burned in a fire made by the gallows. It would be though for two brutal botched executions that Ketch would make his name. One of these took place on the 21st of July 1683 and was performed at Lincoln's Field Inn, which was one of the largest public spaces in London. William Russell or Lord Russell was a leading member of the country party and was a rebel in Parliament to the succession of James II as King of England. Russell was kept at the Tower of London for his final days after being sentenced to death for treason. With the public watching on that day in Lincoln's Field, Ketch made a horrific mess of the job he was asked to perform. A pamphlet later entitled The Apology of John Ketch Esquire notes how he did not dispose of himself as was most suitable and that he was interrupted whilst taking aim. Lord Russell was to be beheaded and it would not be a clean execution. It was said that on that occasion Ketch wielded the instrument of death either with such sadistically nuanced skill or with such lack of simple dexterity Nobody could tell which that the victims suffered horrifically blow after blow, each excruciating but not in itself lethal. Even amongst the bloodthirsty people of society that attended English beheadings, the gory and bloody display had created such anger that Ketch felt forced to write a public apology, and with this apology he did state that he became distracted. The execution of Lord Russell was a sorry sight, with Ketch failing to dispatch the victim with one strike and elongating the suffering. Ketch's reputation would further develop during the execution of James Scott, the first Duke of Monmouth, on the 15th of July 1585. The anger generated by Ketch's mistakes and barbarism almost incited a riot. The Duke of Monmouth was led out of the Tower of London to Tower Hill in front of a huge crowd to be beheaded by Jack Ketch. As the Duke approached Ketch, he turned to him saying, here are six guineas for you, do not hack me as you did my Lord Russell, I have heard you struck him three or four times, my servant will give you some more gold if you do the work well. It's considered that this could have insulted Ketch, to the point where he lost his temper and mentality. The Duke then undressed and touched the edge of the axe that Ketch had in his hands, and he raised that he felt the axe was not sharp enough to take his head off with one clean blow. Following reassurances, he then placed his head on the block and Jack Ketch struck a first blow. This only gave the Duke a small wound and after this the Duke struggled on the block and took his head off the block and looked angrily at the executioner. Following this, Ketch struck once more and the job still hadn't been completed and he carried out two more blows. Still the neck was not severed and the Duke's body began to squirm and move. The crowd seeing this were mortified seen the Duke of Monmouth suffering in barbaric fashion, with Ketch struggling to complete the job. Ketch even dropped his axe and seemingly gave up saying, I cannot do it, my heart failed me, and he was convinced by the sheriff to take up the axe man and finish the job. It took two more blows to kill the Duke, but following this his head was still not severed from his body. Ketch to complete this then had to grab a butcher's knife to cut the last sinews. The anger that surrounded the whole execution of the Duke of Monmouth caused almost a riot and Jack Ketch had to be escorted away by guards in fear for his own safety. It was said that the people were so incensed that he had not been guarded and go away, they would have torn him to pieces. The execution of the Duke was considered to have been much more worse than that of Lord Russell's and following this Jack Ketch was relieved from his duties. In January 1686 he was sent to Bridewell Prison for having a confrontation with a sheriff but he would later be reinstated. His assistant who had taken his place during his stint in prison was actually arrested for robbery four months into the job and it would be Ketch who was placed in charge of hanging his own assistant at the gallows at Tyburn. Ketch's legacy today is one of history's worst executioners who brought even more unnecessary suffering to his victims at the end of their lives. He's considered today a brutal man who really was incompetent at carrying out his duties. The fact his name today is related to the devil or Satan really does show what the contemporary opinion of Ketch was like, and also a room in Newgate Prison where they boiled limbs of those quartered for treason even became known as Jack Ketch's Kitchen. 
His name today is cemented in horrifying executions and is one which should be remembered in the canon of English history. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.